Hey, welcome back to my channel where I'm building a Rams S21 airplane. Um, it, this is going to be a fairly short episode. Uh, I've got two items that I complete. Uh, I install the fuel valve um, and the gasculator to the fuel valve. And then I do the rudder return system, which is an option on some of the older kits. I think it's included in the new ones. Uh, but uh, they're both fairly quick installations with a limited number of parts. So I think this is going to be a fairly short video. So with that, let's, uh, let's put the fuel valve in. The, uh, the next thing I'm going to work on is the fuel valve installation. There's a diagram here. There's a figure. Parts are in the firewall forward section. Get the parts out and start assembling. First thing is we just start putting the fittings together. Uh, you start with the fuel valve installation uh, by getting you some fittings attached into the fuel valve with some sealant, some thread sealant. Don't forget to use the gas appropriate sealant. You've got some brackets, some bushings that you cut off some raw material. They're 0.16 inches. I don't know why we, they just don't use two thick washers, but uh, pretty small bushings to cut up. Then you've got this padded material that goes on either side and one side you got to cut a 5 8 inch hole to get over that valve after you take the handle off. Uh, it says to use a 5 8 inch pipe with the edges sharpened. Well, I didn't have a 5 8 inch pipe so I just went up, I drilled a couple small holes along my circle line and then I went up and borrowed my wife's German sewing scissors. Uh, the ones that are marked do not touch these or you will die. Well, she didn't see me use them to cut the circle, and she doesn't watch my videos, so I think I'm, I'm good for a little bit. Uh, and then, then they, this whole thing attaches to the frame assembly, remembering to keep the handle in the correct position. I don't have it in front of me, but the handle only goes one way. you got to make sure you got it that way. And that's the attachment of the fuel valve. My new battery just arrived, so I'm excited after I finish with this fuel valves and the tank, I think I'll work on the battery box. Uh, the fuel valve attaches to the frame with a couple uh, bolts and nuts and the spacers in between. And there's a couple rivets, some big uh, cherry rivets that hold the bottom in place. The up position, off position is up, back, aft, down is on. Then you connect your, your fuel hoses. Fuel hose leads down to your fuel pump. Fuel hose there leads to your tank. And the one up front goes to the firewall, which I have not connected the connection yet. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is this gascalator mount. It's kind of continuing on from my header, my fuel valve. And this mounts into the firewall. The gasculator mount is a pretty simple device. Um, the first step, it tells you, oh, it gives you a diagram. This hole is already located for you, so you just have to upsize it to 9 16th. Notice the orientation of the gasculator mount is up down. You drill these four holes to a number 11 to take a 3 16th bolt. Then your gasculator is going to attach onto that mount. Your gasculator looks like this, comes in a, in a box. Um, so, and then there's some gas fittings that get attached, um, and I guess that's the installation of the gasculator. Okay, I'm going to install the gasculator. I did put the plug in first with some sealant. I put the bracket in with some sealant. Uh, it's the way the instructions ask you to do it. I'm not sure why we couldn't have screwed it on after, but it was just as easy to put in this way. I've got the fire, 3M fire, um, sealant that will go in this goes in with some 3 16 nuts and bolts and it's on uh, i think i mentioned previously that there is an option in the rudder system called the rudder return and this is a set of pulleys and cables that go between the rudder pedals and the firewall that help take pressure off the cables back to the rudder horn uh, i think i believe it's included in the newer kits um, but it's an option to be ordered for the older kit. So I did order it. It did show up today. Uh, so I'm going to take a break from my other videos and install it. This is the box that it came in. We'll unpack it and we'll get the rudder return installed. The rudder return kit included pulleys, parts, hardware, rivets, cables, a closeout, 
a piece of material for fabrication, a parts diagram, rudder return, parts list, and the text was already in my manual on page 104, and it says to start with installing the forward cable pulley, which is up in this area, so I'll just start, I guess I've got to fabricate this piece, get a piece of hardware on there, and get this forward pulley attached to the firewall. I guess that's what they mean by the forward pulley. The uh, fitting is attached, the support angle is attached from the other side to the two tangs. If I come over here, you can see how it goes through. Uh, I did put some of the fire retardant sealant around each of the openings, uh, and they say to leave the center one loose for now until you tighten up the rudder cables. Uh, the next step is you're just going to create this little pulley assembly with some tangs and pieces and the rudder cable return is going to go behind that and then this is going to attach to this fitting we just installed. The next step is to put this aft pulley assembly together. It's got these things called keepers. The cable goes in and pretty simple installation so far and then this is going to get mounted to the floorboard. I've centered the rudder keepers uh, between the cables and on the floor and transfer drilled right now in number 40 using my long long bit uh, and I'll come up from the bottom on the skin here to put some uh, stainless steel in here and then I'll, I'll drill this out to a 30 and put the rivets in there and that will rivet those keepers into place and then I think all we do is attach the cables to the appropriate holes in the in the appropriate pedals I've uh, got the rudder return installed riveted I did wet rivet because these are stainless steel uh, you can do that if you want it's dissimilar metal uh, so I wet rivet the stainless steel rivets uh, the cable tension gives you a couple options as far as holes. I do have a little bit of a conflict with where this um, pulley comes in conflict with this brake line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset the angle on this so it's pointing down more. I've got some extra slack to tie it down, but right now it's, it's kind of pushing or rubbing right where that pulley is, so I'm going to reset that. But other than that, it looks like it's in. I don't have this pulled back or the tensioner pulled back all the way. I'm going to wait till I get the rudder cables attached. Uh, but that's tightened by tightening the bolt in the back. Well, as I said, I think uh, that went pretty quick. Everything went fairly smoothly. Um, that segment of build took me 8.4 hours, which brings my build to date to 772 hours. As I mentioned in the video, I got my battery in. This next video, I'm going to build the battery box and actually move the master solenoid back to the battery box and do some customization on the, on the box there. Um, but everything went well. Uh, today, I'm doing a little bit of work on the plane and some videos. Unfortunately, our EAA Young Eagle uh, event got canceled due to all the rain we have out here in the West. And it was too bad. We had 50 kids signed up and nine pilots uh, to fly the kids. So it was gonna be a really good day for us. Um, but we've got three more Young Eagle events planned this year and look forward to filming those and, and sharing some of that with you. Uh, so with that, thank you very much. And remember, dream it, just build it.